On the line with us, Professor Mark Crispin Miller, Professor of Media Studies at New York University, author of Fooled Again, The Real Case for Electoral Reform. His website, markcrispinmiller.com and electiondefense.org. You can tweet him at mcrispinmiller. Uh, Mark, welcome. Welcome back. It's been a while. I know. It's been too long, Tom. It's great to talk to you again. Great to talk to you, too. So tell us about NEDC. Yeah, the National Election Defense Coalition is a, a group that's, uh, I, I, as far as I know, the only one out there that's really working for uh, comprehensive reform of our country's abysmal voting system. They're concerned not just about uh, the various tricks and tactics used to suppress the vote, you know, voter caging, purging people's names from voter rolls, voter ID requirements, and so on. But they're equally concerned about uh, the other category of um, election theft, which is computerized election fraud. That's something that the press and, and both parties have long laughed off as conspiracy theory. Uh, but by now, there is voluminous specific evidence that this kind of thing is not only possible, but, but actually has happened. Uh, the National Election Defense Coalition is is working uh, very, very um, diligently and intelligently to solve this problem. Uh, they're helping uh, some righteous members of the House craft hard-hitting legislation uh, in Congress. They are engaged in uh, public education, and crucially, they're 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 working along with activists for civil rights environmental justice and uh, climate balance, because they've gotten those people to understand that if we don't have uh, a, a genuinely uh, democratic, fair and honest voting system in this country, we're not going to make progress on any front. I think that's a key uh, perception, and it's one that the coalition gets. So I'm, I'm uh, trying to help them spread the word about the work they're doing. So the, the, their website is? Uh, I think it's electiondefense.org. .org. Okay, that's the election defense website. Great. Yeah. And so and people should go ahead. just let me add they, at my at my suggestion, they just put up a donations uh, page, mm -hmm. and, I, and I think the, their work is so righteous and so necessary. We cannot go through uh, uh, any more elections like this one. I'm sure you'll agree with that. Yeah. This has got to stop, and and one. Uh, the most important way to stop that is is to establish a, a legitimate voting system. Yeah, yeah. And what would that look like in your mind? Well, um, okay, it would involve uh, doing away with computerized voting and computerized vote counting. Uh, it would involve uh, banning the participation of private companies in our voting system. We have a system that's computerized and privatized, so that in, in two ways it's completely inappropriate for any country that calls itself a democracy. We should uh, turn, instead of you know, relying on private companies to, to count the vote and then tell us what the numbers are, we should turn to uh, hand-counted paper ballots, ballots counted out in the open, which is the kind of thing we see in many other... Uh, it's what they do in Canada. It's, it's why it took a day in the UK for them to count the Brexit vote. Well, that's right. And, and it's worth noting you know, that the Netherlands and Ireland and Germany all had brief flirtations with electronic voting and all gave it up uh, and returned to hand-counted paper ballots. Right. Now, let me add that there is also another uh, uh, legitimate means of counting the votes that, that election integrity activists have been looking into. It's digital ballot images. People should do a search on that phrase. It turns out that, that uh, most electronic uh, machines are capable of generating uh, a ballot image that can actually function as a kind of, um, uh, you know, trustworthy marker of how people voted. As an audit trail. Uh, well, yes. And, and what's striking and troubling about this is that, that the activists who have been requesting election officials all over the country to make these images available have been digging in their heels and refusing, okay? Hmm. This, this is one sign of, of um, you know, possible malfeasance malfeasance in this election, I think that the two methods are not mutually exclusive. Hand-counted paper ballots and or digital ballot images, uh, either one, possibly both, would be a vast improvement on the system we have now. Let me add, uh, it's also, I think, imperative 
that people be automatically registered to vote on their 18th birthdays. That would be an extremely simple thing to do. And it would get rid of all this uh, Jim Crow stuff, you know, interfering with voter registration and so on. Right. And we should also make uh, Election Day a national holiday. Everybody should be voting on Election Day. And that's very important. I mean, I, I, I appreciate uh, people's enthusiasm about early voting. Uh, on the face of it, it's a very good idea. But, you know, s since a high turnout is a very effective um, way to counter efforts to steal elections, it seems to me an unwise thing to, to dilute the effect of high turnout by spreading it out over, you know, days or weeks before Election Day. So I think that, you know, rather than have this sort of um, chaotic system of different kinds of early voting systems from state to state, we really ought to just, you know, bite the bullet and make Election Day a national holiday which wouldn't take any more, I don't think, than an executive order by the president. Hmm. Interesting. Or at the very worst, an act of Congress. I mean, you know, it's uh, right. they can name a post office that can make, you know, they, they can create national holidays, right? So, yeah, it's out. good stuff. I'm Professor, I'm, that, I'm sorry, go ahead, Mark. I just wanted to say, uh, you know, I'm grateful for your making that point about an act of Congress because both parties uh, are, are guilty of letting the situation slide to the point we're at now. Neither one of them, strangely, seems to have much of an investment in improving the system, uh, to put it mildly. So this is something that, that uh, you know, we the people, to use a quaint phrase, really have to push for uh, with, with real revolutionary vigor because the two parties and the media uh, are, for some reason, dead set against an honest uh, recognition of what's going on here and uh, appropriate steps to, to fix the problem. Yeah, amen. Mark, Professor Mark Crispin Miller, Professor of Media Studies at New York University, the author of Fooled Again, The Real Case for Electoral Reform. His website, Mark Crispin, C-R-I-S-P-I-N, Miller.com, and electiondefense.org, the organization he's been talking about. You can tweet him at M. Crispin Miller and, uh, and at Fix Elections. I'm assuming that's electiondefense.org. Mark, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you, Tom. Great talking to you. We'll be back.